And then we also have people working on the Amazon all over the, all over the world. Uh, the U.S. office, uh, we have offices in Europe and also in China who, uh, who focus on the role of their governments and their marketplaces when it comes to uh, deforestation worldwide, and in this case, focus, uh, focus specifically on the Amazon. Um, this, uh, it's actually a crazy coincidence today that we're talking about the forest code. Uh, today in the New York Times, there's a, a pretty comprehensive piece, um, almost as comprehensive as it should have been, but actually very, <laughs> very comprehensive um, about Gem on the Forest Code, and uh, it's actually good timing because this is the issue that a lot of people are picking up today to read about the State of the Union address. Um, so I hope that there's uh, more attention given to this big issue. Um, it's, it's difficult to talk about the Forest Code because the Forest Code, it's hard, generally hard to communicate because the Forest Code is this, uh, it's this whole network of regulations and laws that dictate what native vegetation uh, can be cut what native vegetation needs to be saved, how much native vegetation on private lands needs to be preserved and where. Um, so it's, it's, it's very complicated. It's been around for 70 years. It's, it's a you know, huge book of regulations. But there are some key points, some key controversies that are being pushed through the Brazilian Congress right now that uh, will have devastating consequences. And I have the, there's a short clip that, um, you know, it's almost like a PSA that actually gives a pretty good overview and we're going to go into much detail, to, uh, much more detail today. Um, so just uh, bear with me. Who made this? Uh, this is also from uh, Greenpeace. Okay. So it was playing a second ago. Um, Actually, I really don't need this video, but um, we, we, I, I will, I can send out a link after this if you search on YouTube for Forest Code Explained, um, Forest Code Explained Greenpeace, you'll get a really quick, you know, a, a nice little animation about what's going on um, with the Brazilian Forest Code right now. And this is, uh, this is a very key year for the Brazilian Amazon right now. Um, not just because the forest code is in the balance this year, and this is the uh, this is the first time in recent memory that it has a, that it's in real danger of being weakened and stri stripped and weakened, uh, but also this is a year that uh, Brazil is going to be on the world stage with the Rio Plus Twenty Earth Summit and going to be presenting its record on sustainability to the world. And Brazil has a lot to brag about. Um, it has a great record in fighting deforestation overall in the last 10 years. Uh, but nonetheless, there's a lot of holes in this image, uh, this illustrious image that's presented. It's also been successful in uh, lowering its carbon emissions, uh, embracing clean energy overall, um, and, and, and also and at the same time lifting uh, a huge population out of poverty, um, a population almost the size of the UK out of poverty in the last 10 years. So there's a lot that Brazil sh should be proud of and a lot that Brazil can teach, but there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of issues underlying this that uh, show that Brazil's commitments to uh, clean energy, which I'm not going to talk too much to talk at all today, but deforestation um, is, is very inconsistent. So this is, this is what um, Brazil's been uh, presenting to the world. This is a graph of deforestation, uh, deforestation rates in over the past 10 years. And they just released uh, 2011. And you, know, and the, you see the trends going down. You also see these peaks when you know, they're measuring the size of the forest lost and, you know, by, by you know, comparing the areas of entire countries. And you know, this, is, uh, th this graph is deceiving uh, because the only points that are measured are the, end, the overall uh, reports at the end of each year. And within this is actually there's more than meets the eye. Um, especially this past year, uh, you know, the, one of the big proposals with weakening the uh, forest code is, the, is granting amnesty to people who've been destroying the forest illegally. And when it became a, when, when that bill, when the bill reached the, the House of, the Chamber of Deputies, the lower house of the Brazilian Congress, there's a huge spike in deforestation. And so what, and, and, a, and as a reaction, you know, midway through the year, uh, the government brought, brought together the, 
cattle and soy industries, they devoted more resources to federal enforcement, and then they were able to bring it down to the point that the average was the lowest reported rate ever. But, there, but what actually happened during this, the beginning of this year, during the dry season, was uh, really dangerous. And this is, this is an example of what you see here. Um, this is land that's being turned into pasture. You, you see almost like the cycle of what happens. This is, uh, uh, you know, slash and burn. This is the um, native vegetation, slash and burn, uh, pasture, and then it turns into soy over here. So it looks green from the sky, but this is what it's replacing, this very carbon-rich uh, forest that the whole world needs and that local communities depend on. Um, so this is, this is just the state of Mato Grosso. And so this is just an example. This blue is the, um, is the rate of deforestation this past year during the same time period. So what you see is these four months, this past year, this is an you know, almost unprecedented spike. You know, sometimes it's uh, you know, up to eight times the rate as the year before during the same month. Uh, and, so that, and so then they were able to, uh, you know, they, luckily they were able to step in and lower it. But w what we also saw was areas where there wasn't deforestation before, frontier areas. Um, normal, the past pattern of deforestation in Brazil has been this arc of deforestation uh, that, you know, that goes, basically, that goes uh, east to west. And then they were noticing deep in the Amazon where there weren't roads before, there were just new, uh, you know, we refer to them as polygons, new clearings that were never there before and that we never expected to see before. And so, and, and the biggest, uh, and, and of course, you know, the cost of here is not just carbon, not just biodiversity, um, but it's also the local communities. These are uh, two, two activists that were um, killed. These were two environmental activists that have been embracing alternative uh, mo um, models of economic development. Uh, primarily, this was, uh, uh, you know, Brazil nuts. That can, is a model of, of an economic model that, you know, embraces the canopy, keeps the forest standing. And they were in direct conflicts with, uh, and they were uh, denouncing and reporting the, those who were doing illegal logging on their um, extractive reserves. Um, this is Zay Claudio and his wife. Uh, this, the, they were, um, coincidentally, they, they were murdered. They were both assassinated uh, by paid gunmen uh, right, after the, uh, right after the lower house of the Brazilian Congress passed this new law that's going to weaken the forest code. And, um, you know, in, in one strange turn of events is while they were voting on this, they, uh, they announced the death of these activists in, in from the state of Pará, and they, the members of the caucus in the Brazilian Congress who are pushing this new law uh, actually booed the announcement. So who, who is this new caucus? Who's this force? Um, this, is a, this is a group of senators. Uh, they call themselves the Juralistas, the ruralists. Um, they're, they are an agribusiness lobby, but they frame themselves as defending the little guy. This is a, a paid, I mean, it really is very parallel to the Tea Party here in the U.S. This is a, um, you know, basically a paid protest where they brought in uh, ranchers from all over Brazil, and they were, this guy's claiming to be crucified by this environmental dictatorship of environmental regulations that, that's happening in Brazil. Um, you know, they contrast that with the local activists, forest communities that are actually threatened by these guys or um, people acting in their interests. Uh, the people who are, you know, in the presence of the Juralistas in Congress are these two people. Um, these are two of the main leaders. This is Aldo Bello, who's from the Communist Party of Brazil. So again, trying to label this cause of weakening the forest code as a popular um, cause. And this is uh, Cati Abreu who is a senator from Tocantins, but she also serves as the president of the uh, trade association of the agribusiness lobby. And this agribusiness lobby not only receiving um, money from all the uh, specific trade associations of cattle and soy, but they also get some, you know, some major multinational corporations you might have heard of, Bungi, Cargill, Monsanto, um, are also giving money to this uh, rural bloc. And they've been, they've poured an unprecedented amount of cash into this campaign. They've basically put, um, you know, anywhere from eight to ten million dollars. Their, their big, uh, their, their big point is that, you know, they're trying to sell this image that the forest is getting in the way of agricultural yields and agricultural development, feeding the world, 
um, you know, developing the Brazilian economy. And the scientific, the science says that that's not true. There's a study um, that says there's, you know, the land is unnecessary to increase food production in Brazil. And actually, this past year, when Brazil had the lowest rate of deforestation on record, it actually improves, Im improved its yield. There's 61 million hectares of unused degraded land uh, that can be recovered and used for agriculture. And the big, and the big problem is that the number one driver of deforestation in the Amazon is cattle. And that's anywhere from 60 to 80 percent of the deforested land is used for cattle. And it's very sparse compared to the U.S. It's 1.1 head per hectare. Um, and so there's a huge potential to save land or not, uh, or at least double the amount of uh, beef produced in Brazil and soy produced in Brazil without chopping down in a single tree. And then there's also, as I mentioned before, alternative forest products, uh, acai, which, you, um, which now almost everyone has heard about, uh, uh, Brazil nuts, uh, guarana, um, uh, cupuaçu, uh, you know, sustainably harvested furniture. So th there are, um, you know, so there all are, are alternatives. Now the, the Brazilian Forest Code, um, you know, up until this past decade, it hasn't really been enforced as strongly. And one of the reasons it had about three percent of the fines that are levied under the Brazilian Forest Code are actually collected. One of the reasons why it's been a real threat to the Hura Listas is one federal enforcement stepped up, but also there's these private sector efforts like the cattle moratoria, the soy moratorium, that uh, th where it's, a, it's basically private pressure, uh, where the international market says that we're not going to, they refuse to buy products that come from farms or ranches that have been cited for deforestation, illegal deforestation of the forest code. So, you know, filling the, the international market, uh, thanks to, you know, NGOs, uh, including Greenpeace and Allies, um, have made, have, have basically limited the space for these, um, the, these commodities that come from deforestation in, in the international marketplace. So that's one of the reasons why they want to create amnesty and change the laws so that they can sell more and export more. And so the, so one thing that the Forest Code does, it tells you how much of the, uh, how much of the property you need to actually preserve as a private landowner. Um, this goes into details depending on what type of biome. Uh, there's certain there's certain limits in the Amazon. It's 80% of the property. This limit is uh, you know going to be almost non-existent with the loopholes that they're putting in. Um, and and then the the other thing that it does is uh, it, it tells you what type of vegetation needs to be off limits and needs to be protected on your land. This is the top of mountains, uh, landslide, uh, steep mountain slopes, river and riverbeds. And could anyone guess why uh, vegetation in these areas should not be, okay, um, not be removed? Soil erosion. Hmm? Soil erosion. Yeah, exactly. Erosion, uh, flooding. Uh, this is, it's, I mean, this is just basic, you know, protecting, uh, you know, protecting your own resources. You know, this is very dangerous. If you remove this vegetation, it results in landslides. And this past, about a year ago today, there were these huge uh, landslides in Rio, on, on, in Rio uh, de Janeiro, and, the, and I'll show you some pictures of that. And so the, the other thing is, so we, we're, we're, we're going to see with the new forest code law that is, is moving swiftly through the Brazilian Congress. You're going to have deforestation go, and then you're going to have amnesty. Um, now, and this is particularly controversial, there, uh, so apparent, they, they say that the, the version in the Senate, which we'll talk about in a second, um, it requires one to plant trees to actually get the amnesty. Um, but what, what we see is actually, in, 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 what happens was when the, the way that the law is written is that you can plant eucalyptus plantations, which is the next booming industry in Brazil. And eucalyptus plantations, monoculture plantations, don't equate native vegetation. Uh, there's nothing can survive there. You can't eat eucalyptus, and the, it takes up a lot of res, uh, resources, uh, water resources in the area. And then it also is, uh, it requires a lot of pesticides. So it basically kills, um, uh, ruins the livelihoods of neighboring communities with uh, eucalyptus. 